Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 167 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine. And the incredible top story today is that the Ukrainian military has successfully struck a Russian military airbase in occupied Crimea. We all knew this day would come. Today is the day, apparently. And there are reports of 12 large explosions at this Russian airbase in Nova Fedorivka, and it's home to Russia's Air Force fighter jets, and I'm sure a lot of planes were just destroyed. There's lots of pictures and videos on social media. I can't play the videos for you because that gets me in trouble with YouTube, but I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. But there's lots of videos from Russian tourists trying to enjoy their summer vacation on the beach, and there's a giant mushroom cloud in the background from the Russian military being destroyed. So all of the civilians and tourists that were in Crimea are now trying to get off the peninsula. Here's a video on social media of a Russian lined up at the Crimea bridge to get off of Crimea. So no more bikini pictures on the Black Sea for Russian tourists. And I actually think this is the correct thing to do for the Ukrainian military. They struck a military target on the far west. Everyone on the peninsula knows that potentially now Ukraine has these 300 kilometer range GMLRS rockets from the United States. This is not within the 70 kilometer range that they've been striking up to this point. So potentially they just got the delivery. No official announcement from either Ukraine or, or NATO or the United States. But there's only one way that they could have struck this Russian Air Force base with 12, with 12 missiles. So all these civilians are currently trying to get off the peninsula and they need to use this bridge. But I think in the next couple days, potentially by next week, the Ukrainian military will start targeting and attempting to destroy this bridge. So there's a window of opportunity for civilians to evacuate. I think that's the correct move to make. And how is the Russian military going to respond to this now that all of their naval and air force assets in occupied Crimea are fair targets and they will be attacked? I, I don't know. I, I don't know how people who support Russia are going to respond to this, but they're probably going to say that the special limited military operation is still going according to plan. Here's an exclusive video I found of Russia stating that they've destroyed all of the HIMARS launchers, and this is the video they released to prove that Ukraine does not have the, the capability of launching these rockets. Obviously, this is a joke, but for people who support Russia in this war, they're probably dumb enough to believe that this is evidence that all of the HIMARS launchers have been destroyed. Of course, they haven't, and they've been going to work. Once again, they have been striking this Anatovsky Bridge over the Dnipro River. And for some reason, Russian soldiers keep taking videos of the damage to the bridge and posting it on social media so people on the West can see the damage. This is pretty interesting, but they did strike this bridge again yesterday as Russia, the last couple days, has been attempting to repair it. So let's check this out. That's actually a really nice trapper keeper that this Russian soldier has. I didn't know Russia had a trapper keeper technology that nice. Additionally, I mentioned this in my last video that for the only other way to get across this river for the Russian forces is the hydroelectric dam slightly upstream from the Anatovsky Bridge. 
And this, uh, this, this pathway over the river does have an Achilles heel. Now, the Ukrainians cannot damage the dam, as this would release the reservoir, but there is a second bridge over the canal, and this canal is used to get boats upstream past the dam. It's very narrow, uh, but the HIMARS missile system is so precise that yesterday, reportedly, Ukraine went for it. And over this canal, this is very narrow, there is a road, there is a bridge, but there's also a rail line. And Ukraine prioritized targeting this rail line bridge uh, to stop, once again, Russia from being able to resupply their forces nor on the north bank of the Dnipro River. Absolutely incredible. The actual physical hydroelectric power plant is only 200 feet away from this bridge and this rail line. But yesterday, Ukraine reportedly, I haven't found pictures or videos, but the reports are that they successfully destroyed the rail line, uh, cutting off all of these Russian forces. So we've done the chicken scratch math in the last couple of videos, how many of these GMLRS rockets that Russia is now, uh, Ukraine is now in possession of. And for the next couple of weeks, it is officially high Mars o'clock. There's no reason to save them. More are coming from the United States. So Ukraine every day, every night is going to be using these launchers to rain down a hurricane of destruction on the Russian forces. And now nobody in uh, the occupied Herzon region or Crimea is safe if they possess the 300 kilometer range missiles. And this is actually a very brilliant strategy for the Ukrainians to start going after all of the military assets in Crimea, because if they start their counteroffensive in the next two weeks and start sending in their troops to this area, uh, nobody is coming to help these Russian soldiers. If everything is on fire and destroyed in occupied Crimea, these are the Russian forces that can resupply or help the Russian soldiers now stranded, now isolated on the north bank of the Dnipro River. Something big potentially is coming this month, but I think every night, every day, we're going to get more pictures and videos of these GMLRS rockets striking uh, Russian military targets. So how is Russia responding to all of this bad news? And it looks like at least one Russian general has lost his mind because Russia has now mined the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and is threatening to blow it up. This is hard to confirm because obviously no independent journalists are going to be allowed to interview this general or go inspect this plant. But reports are coming out that Russian troops have deliberately wired energy units of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with explosives, and the Russian Major General Vasilyev, commander of the garrison stationed at the plant, announced readiness to blow up the plant, leading to a nuclear catastrophe. This is the quote that got out, but he said this will either be Russian land or scorched earth. Notice they're no longer talking about liberation or denazification. This is about uh, empire and conquest for Russia. He also told his soldiers that no matter how difficult orders they could receive, they had to execute them with honor, calling them liberators. Meaning, if I tell you to kill yourself, you need to kill yourself. President Zelensky, of course, is condemning this, these acts of Russian terror using a civilian nuclear power plant as a weapon to threaten the European continent. And in a nutshell, this is Russia's current strategy. I'm going to kill myself and everyone else if my demands are not met, if people do not give in to my threats. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. In the meantime, what is the West, what is the United States going to do to respond? And Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin just announced the single largest Ukrainian security assistance package to date, worth $1 billion. These security packages keep being announced and delivered every two to three weeks. And included in this package, there are additional 155 millimeter artillery ammunition for the M777, there's 1,000 Javelin missiles, hundreds of AT-4s. These are very effective Swedish shoulder-fired uh, 
man-portable anti-tank weapons, claymore mines, medical supplies, 50 armored medical vehicles. But when you think about all this minor stuff, that does not add up to 1 billion. And the top line item is additional ammunition for the High Mars launcher, the M270, and the Mars 2. So if we just do the math, let's pretend half of this assistance package is just these GMLRS rockets, including the 300 kilometer range one. Uh, maybe each one on average is worth about 168,000. Maybe the longer range one is a little bit more expensive. But if you just think about how many of these missiles the United States is sending, half a billion divided by 168,000 is 2,976 missiles. And Russia has no defense for them. Their air defense systems cannot shoot them down. The plan appears just to be to take it, to absorb all of this damage and destruction. Now, when asked about the specific numbers of the guided multiple launch rocket systems to be fired from HIMARS, Call, the spokesperson, added that the DOD will not be giving a specific number. The United States doesn't want to say how many of these missiles they're sending. However, he did say that several hundred GMRS over the past few weeks have been delivered, considering the effectiveness of the HIMARS and GMRS pairing that has been received since early deliveries began in the country. Call also provided insight into how the United States plans to ensure Ukraine maintains a steady supply. Here's the interesting quote. We provided a tremendous number of GMRS in the last security assistance package, and we're now in a rhythm of shipping it so that things are arriving on a steady cadence. This is very important in the military. So I think you can expect in the next security as uh, assistance package coming in the next couple weeks that there will be the next increment of these GMLRS rockets. You haven't seen the last of GMLRS. Just think of the logistics challenge of the United States taking thousands of these very large, very heavy missiles out of storage, loading them onto C-17s, flying them from North America to Poland, unloading them safely, getting them on trucks, and then the Ukrainians have to take them into their own borders. It's absolutely incredible, especially over the last five weeks, what Western allies have accomplished, and it's showing on the battlefield for the Russian forces. So what is Russia's strategy to respond to all of this devastation they're currently experiencing? And Russia plans to freeze the war in Ukraine for six months to be able to accumulate more troops and equipment, as well as wait for the West to get tired of supporting Ukraine. This is according to the counselor to the head of Ukraine's presidential office. So think about that. At the rate of loss that Russia is experiencing for troops and equipment, they're somehow delusional or optimistic enough to believe that in six months, somehow they'll have more troops and equipment than they do today. Additionally, they're also hoping that with political elections in free and fair democracies, that public opinion for supporting Ukraine will shift. But for the United States, that just isn't going to work. Yes, this November we have midterm elections, but with the authorization of the Lend-Lease Act, only two people have basically the authority to continue resupplying Ukraine. That is President Biden and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. And we're not having a presidential election in the next six months. President Biden will remain in office for the next two and a half years, and I don't see the strategic objectives or the policy positions of the Department of Defense changing over the next six months. So this is a pipe dream for Russia. This is an utter desperation move. The next story that I want to follow up on that I mentioned in my last video was that terrible report from Amnesty International and the segment that aired on CBS News. And since two days ago, CBS News has retracted the story and deleted the tweets in which the founder of the nonprofit, uh, Jonas Oman, was quoted as saying that only 30% of aid being sent from the West is actually reaching the front lines in Ukraine. The implication that a majority of aid being sent to Ukraine is either being stolen, lost, or misused. This is a completely bogus statistic, absolutely made up, no evidence to support it. 
CBS News did the right thing by retracting the story. However, you played CBS News played right into Kremlin propaganda and people who support Russia. Within the United States Congress, there's a very small number of representatives who do support Vladimir Putin, do support uh, Russia, and do not want to see the United States supporting Ukraine. And of course, they jumped on and cited this CBS News source saying that aid being sent to Ukraine is mostly being stolen, wasted, or lost. Once again, this is absolutely not true. The final news story I want to share with you on any other day and any other time would be a top story if Crimea wasn't being bombed and a nuclear power plant wasn't being held hostage. But this is still important. Russia has suspended the inspections as part of their strategic arms treaty with the United States. So about 15 years ago, Russia and the United States negotiated the New START treaty in which they would reduce their nuclear deployed warheads, and the enforcement mecha mechanism is that they can uh, basically visit and inspect each other's nuclear sites to make sure they're in compliance with the treaty. For obvious reasons, Russia does not want uh, United States military personnel visiting their nuclear sites and their military bases. Uh, these are intelligence gathering opportunities. So Russia has pulled out of this part of the treaty. That doesn't mean they're increasing their nuclear stockpile or doing something crazy, but it is still alarming that uh, Russia is unilaterally pulling out of these treaties that guarantee global, global security. So how do you sleep at night uh, knowing that Russia continues to escalate, Russia continues to threaten, Russia is using nuclear weapons uh, to threaten the world? And here's a picture of how Ukrainian defenders on the front lines have to sleep um, in a trench they dug, sleeping on cardboard in their uniforms next to their weapons. I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful for what they're doing because they're the only ones right now that can do it. The final thing we need to follow up on is in my last video, I had the idea to help two Ukrainian performers appearing in the live shows on America's Got Talent. In the comments section, I actually got more negative comments than positive comments about this idea. People were uncomfortable with the idea of exclusively supporting um, performers not based on talents, but just based on their nationality. I understand that argument. It, it is persuasive. I don't want to be unfair to the other contestants. All of them are deserving for their own specific reasons. So we won't be doing this. In addition, my idea wouldn't have worked because if you live outside the United States, you can't get the AGT app on your phone and then vote for the contestants. I didn't know this. Additionally, bad news is that the aerial performer, Svetlana Rohisnia, she actually did not make the final cut to be in the live shows. I didn't understand how this worked, but the judges said yes to about 130 performers but only 55 can be invited to participate in the live show. For whatever reason, Svetlana was not invited to perform in the live show. If you still want to support her, I'll link her Instagram account down below. She seems like a very nice lady, and obviously she's very attractive. On her website, it says that she, in 2021, was a resident performer at the Mad Apple in Las Vegas, this is a Cirque du Soleil show at New York, New York, if you're familiar with the Las Vegas Strip. I don't know if she's still performing there or if potentially she left this show and she's doing something else. I'm not quite sure where she's currently performing. The other Ukrainian performer, Alexander, actually did make the cut to be in the live shows. So if you watch the show and you want to vote and you want to support him, he'd greatly appreciate it. Here's his Instagram account if you want to follow him and show him support. He seems like a very nice guy. That's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up. Really helps out the channel. Any comments or questions or know something I don't, let me know in a comment down below. I greatly appreciate it. Till the next video, take care, be safe.